Hello, my name's uh, Guy Pratt. I'm a, a doctor in Birmingham in the UK, and I'm going to uh, discuss um, a study that's been presented at ASH as an oral uh, talk uh, of today on Monday, the 13th of December. Uh, it's looking at uh, mass spectrometry for assessing uh, myeloma proteins in the blood. Um, mass spectrometry is a is a technology that allows us to measure myeloma proteins to a much lower level than the existing uh, conventional techniques that we've used for many decades, which are serum electrophoresis and uh, densitrometry. And therefore, it's a very exciting technique that's coming in to be used um, through, through labs uh, over the next few years. Hopefully, it will become uh, established. Uh, the study that Dr. Giles is presenting at this meeting was uh, looking at patients who'd had uh, induction treatment with carfilzomib, lenalidomide, dexamethasone and cyclophosphamide, followed by a stem cell transplant. Uh, and these patients were in a trial that looked at maintenance lenalidomide. The point of our study was to look at uh, responses using mass spectrometry um, after the initial chemotherapy, uh, then after the transplant at uh, day 100, which is the conventional time for assessing response after a transplant, and then also later on uh, in the patient journey. What this study showed was that mass spectrometry is much better at measuring uh, small levels of myeloma protein in the blood. It's much more sensitive than existing techniques, it was able to detect um, myeloma light chain uh, in patients uh, when they were in conventional complete remission by uh, conventional existing techniques. So it's clearly uh, giving us additional information about uh, response of uh, myeloma to, to treatment. Importantly, uh, patients who did have residual um, protein by mass spectrometry, um, it was a prognostic value as well. So patients with residual protein didn't do so well as patients where there was no protein uh, found by mass spectrometry. So there is some discrepancy with, uh, if you look at patients in complete remission, uh, but using mass spectrometry, you, you can begin to divide those patients into patients who don't have a power protein by mass spectrometry and those that still do. There are a number of caveats with mass spectrometry. It's important to be aware that um, there are a number of different technologies and techniques and there are lots of different mass spectrometry machines and some are more sophisticated than others and therefore uh, can measure the myeloma proteins at a much lower level than other machines. And that's important as we go forward. It clearly does provide additional information uh, to conventional techniques. And I think importantly, it should be used in conjunction with other technologies that be been a use for assessing minimal residual disease, such as bone marrows, uh, bone marrow biopsies and flow cytometry and next generation sequencing and also imaging, because it gives us additional information. It's identifying uh, a group of patients who do particularly well, who are mass spec negative, and negative for MRD, uh, and negative by imaging. Those are the patients that are likely to, to do uh, particularly well. It's exciting technology, um, and uh, it's definitely here to stay, and I think it will replace uh, existing techniques. Thank you very much.